This movie was released in 2001. I was around 10 or 11 so I was kid. I remembered being shocked to find out Jim Carrey for the first time in his career was playing a normal character that was not crazy or goofy. I saw this movie on the big screen opening day. It's a good movie MPAA rating. PG, has occasional language but pretty clean overall. Why have I not seen this movie sooner? The Majestic has been in my Netflix queue for a while now, but it feels like the kind of movie I should have seen when I was 12, largely clean and with a valuable message that has only gained in social importance. As a fan of The Truman Show, I was mainly curious to see Jim Carrey in another serious role, and, as with the other film, The Majestic ranks among his very best, making it a shame that its poor box office likely turned him and director Frank Darabont away from developing similar movies. The year is 51, and Hollywood screenwriter Peter Appleton, Carrey, has dumbfounded when his promising career is stalled by the second Red Scare, leaving him blacklisted and expected to testify before Congress as a potential communist. In his despair, he has an accident, waking with amnesia near the small town of Lawson, California. There, he is mistaken for Luke Trainville, the war hero's son, thought to be dead, of the local theater owner, Martin Landau, who welcomes his long-lost boy home. Over time, he bonds with the town, grows closer to Luke's girlfriend Adele, Laurie Holton, and helps breathe life back into the family theater, the majestic, yet you know it is not meant to last. I can't help but mention David Ogden Stiers, whose presence in the small town visited by a humbled would-be hotshot immediately brought to mind the similarity with Death Hollywood. Throughout the Majestic, I was trying to figure out how I felt about it and kept settling on it depends it depends how the life slash mistake is revealed. It depends how all this communist finger pointing plays out. I just wasn't sure where the film would ultimately end up, so I couldn't decide if I truly liked it or not, wavering on the edge between list worthy and list runner up. By the end, though, I was sure. Despite my unease, it definitely stuck the landing. The climax, a culminating speech before the House and American Activities Committee clearly echoing Jimmy Stewart in Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, is an absolute standout scene, made even more powerful by its extreme timeliness. At a time with so many fingers being pointed and voices being silenced, it's a cinematic plea for constitutional truth, tolerance, and patriotism that should be seen by every American. Frank Drapond was clearly channeling Frank Capra with this movie, and just as Capra's movies were derided at the time as Capricorn, the Majestic didn't fly with critics wary of anything remotely sentimental, which is a crying shame. I'll admit it's a bit too long and predictable, but it's also an endorsement of nostalgia, decency, and the magic of movies, with emotional performances and strong direction throughout. It's modern Capricorn, and, when it's done this well, there's nothing wrong with that. Best line. Peter, speaking to Congress, that's the first amendment, Mr. Chairman. It's everything we're about if only we'd live up to it. It's the most important part of the contract every citizen has with this country. And even though these contracts, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights, even though they're just pieces of paper with signatures on them, they're the only contracts we have that are most definitely not subject to renegotiation not by you, Mr. Chairman not by you, Mr. Clyde not by anyone, ever. Too many people have paid for this contract in blood.